26. And so, once again, I love print, but this is reality. This is not what I think might happen. This is what has occurred. Okay? So, simply a matter of saying, take care, because it could happen here. And if all you do is print in the traditional way, you could have some difficulties in the future. Again, just a picture of what's happened to the number of establishments. Here's another important point. Here is, in 2000, this line here represents the typical printing operation and the percentage of revenue driven by lithography. And it was 85%, 85, and only 13 was from other products and services, whether it be mailing or fulfillment. It was not printing. And fast forward now, and in 2012, it's 52% lithography, and the balance, 44% from other services. Once again, a foreshadowing of what could happen in a market such as India. It means that the mix is changing, and you can't simply say, I am going to be an offset printer, and that will, in fact, take me into a bright future. Okay, this is simply a chart that once again proves the point. Uh, there is, there's a couple of uh, data points here. Uh, and so we're looking at digital printing and offset printing in the totality of the market. How much of the output was offset? Down, down, down. And how much is digital output? Up, up, up. So once again, fact, just a fact. Now, uh, you heard that I have spent a fair amount of my time, career, over 40 years in the business, but a good portion of it was on the supplier side, with Kodak and with Lostra and most recently uh, at ACFA. And so I thought it would be interesting for the audience to take a look at what's happened on that side. So here we go. Again, these are U.S. statistics. But this is total printing equipment. And it was a huge market, two billion, two billion US dollars in 1999. And that market right now is 400 million dollars, from two billion to 400 million. So a very difficult place to live. And there's more. So if you're in the sheet fed business, in the sheet fed business, here we go, in 1999, it was nearly one billion dollars, sheet fed presses, nearly one billion, and today it is 146 billion. So think about, I heard this morning, by the way, that Mitsubishi and Ryobi are looking to do some deal. It was a bit, it was a bit uh, discreet as to what they would actually do, but it looks as if they're going to join forces. There were hints about synergy and about management and so on. It sounds like it's the first step, I don't know, but it sounds like maybe the first step of some sort of a merger. But if you look at these statistics, how could it be that Heidelberg, and I know there's some Heidelberg folks here, and I know many, many people, I know Bernard Schreier for many years, Heidelberg and KDA and then Roland and Mitsubishi and Komori, with this kind of a market trend, how could it be that everyone keeps everything the same when the market has basically disappeared? It's really, 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 they talk about having to change. This is true. And then this chart simply talks about as the traditional equipment has decreased, the digital equipment has increased. And forgive me, this chart, the, the uh, organization that puts these data together, only began uh, studying the digital piece uh, in 2007. But the message here is, as the traditional offset presses have gone down, the digital equipment has gone up. Our friend from Xerox here can tell you, I'm sure they know these statistics better than I do. Okay, here's another good one, film. Look what's happened to the film market, recording film. It used to be huge, a big market, and it is vanished. It is vanished. And printing plates. These are total printing plates. 
uh, including CTP and including uh, conventional um, data. This is conventional, where film is used, down. And CTP, up, up, up. The new replacing the old, but again, down. And generally, graphic art supplies, uh, again in the US market, over 1 billion, and it's shrunk <coughs> to roughly 700 million. So all of the signals are there. And by the way, I take not misery loves company, they say, but it's tough on our side of the business being a printer. And we're a printer. But the other side of the street, people selling to the printing community, this statistic, these are even more difficult. So it's a tough place to live. Okay, so there are two, two significant headwinds that are blowing against the industry. The first is the economy. And I will say, the economy will get better. We don't know when, it's a mystery, but it'll get better at some point. We don't know how much, we don't know when, but it will get better. The other wind is the more significant headwind, and it is the technology headwind. That will not get better. That will continue to push against our industry, and we need to deal with it. And this is really what it's all about, dealing with the technological changes that are all around us, and it means that we must change. Okay. TV, you'll see in a moment, TV continues to be the key driver. That's not going to change. But if you ask agencies who are buying media, typically you'll hear that print is shrinking in the marketing mix. Not going away, but shrinking. Okay. And here's the chart. And there's lots of data here. But basically, it says TV remains the largest, print continues to shrink, radio is not going away, the internet is growing, it's all stuff that we all believe, we know, uh, but it's a hard fact here. So how are we doing for time? Okay, good. And this is just another message here, the print is shrinking, but again, here's another important fact. In the US market, the settle down number for printing in 2012 was 79 billion dollars. Incredible, a huge, huge business. Even though there are only 28,000 printers left in the market, everyone is feeling the crunch, even in a 79 billion dollar market. So the message here is it's not going away, but it will continue to be hyper competitive hyper-hyper-competitive, but there's still a huge business, and I believe there'll be a huge business here in India as well. Okay, so what we do, one of, the, one of the ways that we try to manage reality as a company is to document fact. And so one could leave a company, one could manage by the gut, visceral, I think this is what's going to happen, or I guess this is going to happen, this is a message, and we'll talk about it more this afternoon. The message is to the extent that you have data, capture it, document it, and share it with your leadership team. And so what we do here is uh, our business is really in three segments, commercial printing, financial printing, and we'll just call it non-traditional printing. Um, some of it is, for example, in the pharmaceutical space. We'll talk more about it this afternoon. But what we do is try to understand where the competition is, where they sit, and how successful they might be, and how large they are. Just so we know who's out there scratching and clawing, trying to take our business away from us. Okay? So my conclusion is that we must transform or it'll be terrible. It'll be a difficult business. It will not be bright and sunny days. People will survive, but survival, for me, is not a strategy. It's just not a fun way. If all I do in the morning is wake up to survive the next day, that gets old very quickly. So the, the thought is, how does one get out from under that spiral of, I, I, I fight to just to live another day? So, most companies, again, U.S. Uh, comment, and my expectation is you hear it and feel it now. Most companies 
are becoming clinical about the business process. And what does that mean? There is this tendency in the print industry to be relationship driven. My friends at this client or that client, they will take care of me. And that, by the way, by the way, I can price my products a little bit higher because he is my friend. So discrimination and pricing is something that still lives in our business, but it is dangerous because someone, someone maybe above your friend is going to say, we need to find more money. And your friend likes you, but he doesn't like you enough to risk his job. And we see it and feel it every single day. And so uh, my point here is that business relationships, business relationships are important, but business results are more important. And that's just a fact. So the other thing that's occurring is in the banking industry, there are many bankers who view our industry as not so good. They view the competition, they view the technology as difficult. And so, when it comes time to go get money, it becomes a difficulty. So, one needs a strong balance sheet to be able to prosper in the world. So, what's the challenge? Figure out how to become an outcome company versus all I do is print. I print, and by the way, I can print cheap, and my quality is good, and my service is good, and all of that, to me, equals commodity. Because everyone is out there saying, I can do it cheap, I can do it fast. And by the way, we're friends for a long time, so let me have the order. I think that's a dangerous strategy, for sure. So, one question, it used to be you had to pick one of the two or three really important aspects of I am a high value service provider, meaning I don't mess up and I deliver on time, or I am a low cost provider. Those are the two real big ones. I am a low cost provider, so I'm the cheapest in the marketplace, or my service is the best. And then the other one is, oh, by the way, the other guy's quality is poor, so therefore my quality is better. And I would say today's model says technology has allowed quality to be pretty, not perfectly easy, but it is not so hard. Printing has become more of a science. It used to be a craft. It used to be, in a sense, black magic. And it's no longer black magic. The, uh, the classic uh, in the press room was the press person, the pressman, he would spit in the bucket because the fountain solution needed that, just that little, little, Spit in the bucket, that'll do it. It doesn't work anymore. So, so the magic is gone. It is now scientific. So it's easy to, to be high quality today. So the question here is, even, even if you are a low cost provider, can that be the ticket to success? And I would suggest that's dangerous. Everyone in here knows the words variable margin. Dangerous, dangerous statement. It says that I'm going to sell a job for less than full cost, but I'm still contributing to overhead, so take the job. And the way the story goes, you say 10, I say 9, he says 8, and before you know it, the spiral down. It's the race to the bottom. So I think being the low cost provider is a dangerous strategy in, in my mind. Once again, sell outcome, not simply output. Okay. And then another dilemma that we have, and I trust it's here also, is that salespeople trade on relationships and are absolutely resistant to the new technology because they don't know. They don't know. Some of them don't know, I say this respectfully, some of them don't know because they lack the intellectual capability to know. That's true. Some of them don't want to know because they have five years left before they go to retirement and they don't want to be bothered with this change. But if you depend on a selling organization and you want to move into the new world, you've got to figure it out because salespeople that know print will sell print and they will sell it on, your price is too high, you need to lower the price and that's how we'll get more work. 
It is impossible. It doesn't work. Okay? So, my question to my sales force is, go something like this. How many years before retirement? Uh, five years. And my answer is, it's too long. You will not survive. You will not survive. So please learn to sell something different and we will teach you. All right, so what's a company to do? What happens typically is you look for cost containment. For me, cost reduction, productivity gains is a never-ending journey. If you find a thousand rupee today, tomorrow you have to find another thousand, and the next day, and the next day. So one can never rest to say, we have finished the journey of low cost. You must continue to find ways to find cost. And so, for me, once again, what we've done is we Pareto all of our spending from the highest to the lowest. And we don't pay attention too much to the lowest because the return, if you save 50% of 10, okay, it's money. But if you save 10% of a million, it's a whole lot more. And so, pay attention to what matters most is what we always, always talk about. And then how to find more revenue. One trick is to hire salespeople. I don't know the culture here in India, if that's possible, to, in a sense, steal a salesperson that can bring business, but it's a, another tactic that's used. Okay. Acquiring companies, certainly important. Doing tuck-ins, bringing a company into your business, important. Hard to do, but it's also a tactic. And then CapEx is sometimes hard to come by, but we always split CapEx into what do I need to spend to maintain the business? That's one, you want to keep going. Number two, what do I need to spend to grow the business? And the third one is, are there laws that I'm breaking that I must spend money so that I don't break the law? So those are the three buckets of CapEx.